G'day fellas, welcome to a casted game between Marine Lord, who spawns in the west of the map, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty. His opponent, who spawns on the opposite side of the map, you know him, you love him, it's Give You Anxiety, the man. And he is playing the English for us, he is playing the main squeeze, the number one civilization that he loves to play. Now, for anybody unfamiliar with Give You Anxiety, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video over to his Twitch page. You can come check him out when he's streaming live. He's now, I wouldn't say full-time streaming Age of Empires 4, but he is going pretty crazy with it. Come check him out. He's one of the best players in the game right now. And he's going up against Marine Lord. Now, if for anybody who is unfamiliar with Marine Lord, that's okay. Marine Lord is probably one of the best StarCraft 2 players in the foreigner scene. So when it comes to StarCraft, it's a little bit complex when it comes to the way their scene works, but essentially they've got two scenes. They've got Korea, and then they've got everybody else, which is referred to as foreigners, okay? And Marine Lord is a foreigner, that means he's not from Korea, and he's one of the best foreigners that there are. Now, there's a lot of good foreigners when it comes to StarCraft, you've got people like Serral that are very talented, and Marine Lord is another one of those guys. Now, as far as I'm aware, he is going to potentially be giving Age of Empires 4 a run for its money. And by that, I mean that he is thinking about playing it full time. Now, whether that means we see a lot of him, who knows? But nonetheless, he is an incredibly talented StarCraft 2 player, and I'm confident any person that is able to achieve that level of success in StarCraft 2 is going to be able to do crazy things in Age of Empires 4. So I'm excited. Let's take a look at his scouting path that he's elected to do here. A little bit of, of, a, uh, of a curious scouting path. Interesting to note, doesn't actually have access as the Abbasids uh, to any of those early sheep, but he is going to have those berries if he does so choose to get access to them. He will have to make a decision though, whether he goes for those early berries or whether he looks to drop down a lumber camp uh, so if he goes for those berries, it means he's probably going to have to um, go off these straggler trees to get up wood for a lumber camp. Otherwise, he's going to, um, if he doesn't go for, for those, then he's going to be in a difficult spot. Because if we take a look at his macro right now, he's very close to age up. But at the same time, he's very close to running out of food. So I, I hope he's got this worked out. You can see uh, this is my concern right here. He's caught, he's cutting it so, so damn close. A couple of vital villages now. He's going to be able to click up on the button on the age up. Let's see what he goes up with. Going to be going up with the economic wing. So going to be able to get fresh food stuff. So we take a look right there. Reduces the cost of villages uh, or to produce villages by 50%. So managing to just get enough food right there uh, to age up. He Does he have enough to create a villager? There it is. So now should be able to create a villager as well. Very unfortunate timing, I, I will say, for that. Uh, and this map in particular is somewhat to blame because of just the inefficient scout pathing that you can do. So one of the things that I do like to talk about is having the most optimal scouting path. And for Age of Empires 4, it, it seems to be like a bit of a loop around like that and then back to your base to deliver sheep. And he obviously can't do that because there is a giant freaking mountain range in the middle of the map. And so it's like... Uh, yeah, what do you do? And he's obviously elected to do a full loop here and go all the way around. And as a consequence, it's meant he's almost run out of food completely. So something to be very, very careful of uh, when you are playing. And as a result, he's gone quite a bit idle there. Going to be quite heavy on wood in the transition period. I'm curious to see what kind of strategy he goes for. I am of the opinion that Abbasids are very easily able, especially on a map like this, they're able to do a second town center without being uh, challenged. Um, no one has yet to prove me wrong. But if there's a man to prove you wrong about a, a theory like that, it is give you anxiety. We'll take a look over from his perspective and see exactly what he's up to. Give you anxiety. We're going to be dropping down that council hall. Not looking to place it in any really uh, difficult spot. So sometimes we do see players that do like to forward their council halls, like maybe a little bit out here, uh, maybe a bit up to the north, just to get those reinforcements a little bit stronger. Because one of the things that you will do on this map especially is you're going to anchor to one side. You're going to choose one side and typically that's going to be the side that's got the most resources so like if we look at gua he would have uncovered most of the map and if you look from this perspective like you're probably going to go the south it just seems like it's got a little bit more resources but it seems pretty balanced if i'm being honest with you guys uh, but yeah so you could expect to see like a a, a forward um a, a a forward council hall here and then those reinforcements come in a lot sooner they don't have to walk all that distance but nonetheless gua going to be going with the safe in base uh, council hall, and it looks like he's macroing, this is kind of weird, it looks like he's macroing towards a fast castle. Now, one of the things to note is he is on, is he on, where is deer? His deer are down here. So he didn't actually go for a fast deer. 
He's just quite literally on sheep at this point. Um, but he, he's like... I, I don't know. It looks like he's macroing for a fast castle. I, I, I've got no clue. Uh, GUA actually managing to take out one of the sheep. So this is something that your enemy needs to be very cognizant of. If you go in for a raid and try and hit enemy villagers, like you can see this, uh, none of these villagers have actually lost any health, but Marine Lord did come in with his scout and GUA realized and then took a hit on the sheep carcass, killing it instantly. Now Marine Lord has lost that sheep. He could have run back to his base and had that sheep. Very, very cheeky from our GUA. Now we take a look at Marine Lord's base, see what he's up to. Going to be opening up with a stable archery range combination and looking at applying some early pressure. Now, this is something that I probably wouldn't agree with on a map like this, just primarily because of how long the distances are between bases. Now, as the eagle flies, as the bird flies, as the crow flies, they're actually quite close. If you were to draw a line between these two, they're very close to each other. But you've got to remember, they're going to have to go all the way around and back up to go and get there. So it's going to give you more time. GUA spent the whole time just tapping away with one villager on his council hall. He's up at six minutes. And he isn't punished because of that. Like, th this horseman is still just, you know, it hasn't even reached the base yet. Marine Lord now hitting a golden age, so going to be able to get all ten of his structures uh, connected, so having no problems there. Um, going to be, so for anybody wondering exactly what that bonus is, uh, that's going to give him a an economic bonus. So if we take a look down here at the bottom, you'll see that all of his villagers now have a gather rate of an extra 10% of every single resource because he's hit a golden age. You can see he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 buildings all connected to his network. Once he connects this one, that'll be 12, and then the connecting building there will be a 13 as well. But uh, that is, is what drives that. And you can get some pretty crazy bonuses with this as well. So as an example, right now, he's only got 10% of... Uh, villager gather rate but you know if, if he was to connect 30 structures he would get 15% villager gather rate and then 15% research speed as well obviously there's also a late game upgrade as well there tier 3 you can see that one I'm not going to read it out for you because I'm confident you guys will get in the game and work it out yourselves or pause the video if you're watching this one on YouTube and uh, now a little bit of pressure coming out for Nakamura here do we see fresh foodstuffs coming out just yet we do actually see it so Nakamura uh, did I just say Nakamura <laughs> apologies uh, Marine Lord, <laughs> we did watch a Nakamura game earlier, uh, and he was playing the Delhi Sultanate, uh, so that's probably why I'm, uh, I, I said Nakamura, so apologies. We're not watching Nakamura, this is Marine Lord playing against GUA, and now GUA get, putting up a nice little outpost here to defend and hold this gold. You can see part of the reason why he's done that is if we take a look at his base, he has, uh, he, he's got really nowhere anywhere close to a defensive gold. Sometimes you do see a gold spawn here, which is kind of defensive, but you look at that town center range, it only goes to here. GUA now reaching the third age. This, is, this wasn't something that I picked up and actually going with the town center landmark. Eight minutes, very tight timing from GUA right there. Double town center. Now this landmark, you know what's crazy? The English have got access to two S tier landmarks, which is rare. Okay, most civs don't have access to two S tier landmarks, but these are both st landmarks these landmarks so how, how would you define an st landmark an st landmark is a landmark that uh is you, that you would take 99 percent of the time these are both st landmarks the king's palace is an incredible landmark acting as a town center giving you a great expansion point and the council hall giving you the equivalent of two archery rangers incredibly strong early game uh, potential here for give you anxiety gonna be able to get a double boom off here and at the same time tech up to the third age so so smart i love this build from him i really think this is incredibly creative as well getting up at a, at a safe time appreciating that the map that he's on is not going to be able to get punished for this so just when you thought you know making two town centers was the play as the english no gua says hold hold my hat check this out or hold my beer check this out hold my truly i know gua loves a truly he says hold my truly I am going to, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a, a spicy one right here. Villagers taking out a wolf towards the north. We'll check back in with Marine Lord, see how he's doing. It looks like he's got a scout here, so he's going to be able to spot line of sight for any potential invading armies. Sees that there's nothing. GUA having a bit of a difficult spot. Villagers actually looking to trade with some of the archers, and they're like, yeah, mate, maybe we will just go back to the base. Don't worry about it. We do see that he has got that textiles improvement. Going to have plenty of HP on those villagers. No one dying just this early. Now, Marine Lord definitely, I would say at this point, is... is uh, would be down. And the reason why is because he's invested a lot in these opening units, okay? And he's not achieved anything with them yet. Now, okay, sure, he is achieving something. He's beginning to siege down this outpost, beginning to isolate this gold vein. Uh, now, there's a gold vein to the north, but GUA doesn't need a gold vein. He he's going to be able to sit in his base making longbows. That's that's all he needs. He is so happy here. He is like, he is turtling like a madman. 
And that's exactly what he wants. So doing a great job there. Um, we'll take a look at Marine Lord. Looks like we've got an expansion going to be dropping down towards the north of the base, looking to expand up towards the north. Marine Lord putting on a little bit more pressure as well under these farms. And we can see scores are still very close despite GUA being up an age. Uh, Marine Lord evening it up now with that second town center as well. So we, we, we will look to watch uh, how he manages to play this one out. It looks like he's actually going to be macroing towards a third age as well. So looking to get up into that castle age. I'm curious to see which age up, he, which route he's going to go when it comes to his wings. I'm suspecting that the most likely one is going to be that military wing. I'm a big fan of this wing in the in the, uh, in the the early game. But now GUA getting out a couple knights or rather a single knight. And you, he you heard that sound as it hit. You're just like, ugh. Like it, it really hurt when those knights connect because these are these these are they're not upgraded knights but these are your your castle age knights they do not need to be upgraded to veteran uh royal knight status as the french do or uh veteran lancers or anything like that because they don't have available availability in the second age village are going to be going down there marine lord getting his first villager of the game gua being a little bit uh, a little bit cheeky there longbowman going to be coming out for gua as, GUA as well second uh, Knight going to be coming out here. And I've got to say, I really love Give You Anxiety's build here. I, I think this is such a great build. And I think for a map like this, it is just... It's a build that really can't be punished. So I, I, I take my hat off to GUA. A couple Knights now going to be running through. We see he doesn't have the, ar the armor upgrade just yet, but still having a bit of a difficult time uh, against these units. Plenty of horsemen going to be here to surround. Looks like one horseman does manage to go down, getting taken out by the knights. First knight going to be going down, and Longbow is now getting pushed up against. Actually, it's uh, the, the archers actually pushing in on the villagers, but still we see this knight on the back lane having some very effective trades. You can see just how much damage it's doing to these horsemen. That extra armor is really helping out. It's got plus four armor uh, compared to its opponent that's got zero. So these guys are doing five damage uh, to the knight. The knight is doing 24 damage. So really doing a lot of damage here. You can see just how effectively it is trading and give you anxiety getting a great trade. He's going to be very happy with that one. Evening it up in the early game. Now we'll take a look back over at Marine Lord. See how he's doing. Uh, going to be going up with the culture wing. Very curious decision to go with the culture wing here. For anybody wondering about the culture wing, uh, it is especially strong for its preservation of knowledge uh, technology, which once you research it, it reduces the cost of all, ups, all subsequent technology by 30%. So that is absolutely everything. That is your blacksmith upgrades, your mill upgrades, your university upgrades. As your, you know, Did I mention the blacksmith upgrades? It's absolutely everything. Really, really important. Uh, or really, really uh, strong uh, technology to have. In my opinion... I don't think it's the strongest though, or, or at least the way I feel about it, at least in the early game, or at, at least my understanding of the meta, you would go either the culture wing or the economic wing and then go into the military wing. And the reason why is because camel support is so strong. You need camel support and camel support is uh, what's available in the military wing. It increases the armor of all nearby infantry by plus one. So that's both melee and ranged armor together. Um, and so the reason why that is so strong is because um, part of of this game and in the, in the way that it works is if you can stack armor, it's very, very effective at uh, dealing with enemy incoming fire. Marine Lord now reaching the Castle Age, and we just ride on board for G with GUA's Knight for a little bit. I'm going to take a little sip of my Gatorade. Just give me a moment, fellas. All right, there we go. Much better. Much better. And GUA now coming in. Going to be spotting out a couple of these villages here. Looks like he's just ignored them for now. Said, hey, I'm just doing a bit of a scout. Don't mind me, friend. Now spotting out those villages. Not even looking. He gets a charge off. Uh, switches it over to the sword. Going to be able to, to get a hit on one villager, but not going to be able to run it down. We do see that upgrade coming through uh, for the villages of Marine Lord. And now the camels come out. And this is something that I've talked about with a number of players and why we think Abbasid may be one of those sleeper overpowered sieves. And the reason why is the camel. What is what's the ultimate unit that everybody makes in Age of Empires three when when you enter the mid game? It's the knight. D oh, did you guys see that? He just swung his lance around. That was so sick. He did like this little lance swing. Oh, someone clipped that. Clipped that and shipped that. That was awesome. Um, and and so with the with the knight. So knights are like the staple of your army. In most Age of Empires games, it's the archer, right? Like the archer is the unit that you're making a lot of. And then, you know, from there you kind of branch out. But in Age of Empires 4, it seems to be the knight is that what everyone makes. And so if you just make camels, which very effectively counter the knight, uh, simply because they've got uh, debuffs for them, um, and they also uh, just 
do very effectively against cavalry because they have great bonuses. So you can see they do 27 damage against cavalry. Then once you start thinking about it like that, then the Abbasids can be very, very, uh, di yeah, Abbasid can be very difficult to deal with. Going to be picking that one up. Not even like, not even close, just destroying it. Now GUA going to be pushing out on both sides of the map. We spot his line of sight up towards the north. He's created a couple of houses here to create that, uh, advanced line of sight for him now more units moving in having a bit of difficulty these lances managing to capture it and we see marine lords already got the plus one armor upgrade coming through gua still yet to get any plus one upgrades at this point marine lord may be thinking even about that second uh, upgrade let's take a look and spot his blacksmith there it is indeed he is he is getting insulated helm right now which is the second level of upgrade dropping down a couple palings down here towards the south as well marine lord having to fall back and definitely doing a great job up here towards the north because if he manages to spot this out, we'll take a look at his line of sight. He sees the house. He knows that there would be a hunt here. I'd be curious to see whether he actually spots it out. A knight uh, over here, he could potentially... That's that's a windfall right there of 10 villages. That's a lot. Despite that, going to be picking up a nice raid here on the mine. A couple of villages in here. We'll do our best to, to track how many of them there are. First one going to go down. There's 10 remaining. We'll take a look and spot down at the same time towards the west. A couple of archers fighting out, but it doesn't seem all that interesting. Another villager going to be going down, and now we're down to four villages. Now, a whole bunch of villagers did garrison, but I do see that there's three bodies on the ground. So a total of four villagers have gone down right here. And it definitely looks like Marine Lord is starting to pull ahead at this point. We actually see he's beginning to outscale GUA quite well, up to about 500, 600 score lead at this point, despite GUA having such a strong lead in that early game, opening with that great strategy. Marine Lord in a really decent spot here. A couple more villages, nine villages now. All of these villages are very low on HP. We see them getting caught here. And GUA's in a difficult spot because what can he use to counter these camels? The camels are going to be running around the map. You see how much speed they've got, 1.62. They're going to be able to go everywhere. More villages are going to be going down right now for GUA. A third town center going to be going up down here towards the south. And GUA dropping down a monastery as well. We see that there's a relic inside it right now. He's doing a little bit of relic collection out on the map. And now a Lancer push beginning to come across the map. GUA's got to be careful because he's marching longbows into this. And this is spelling a little bit concerning right now for GUA because the tide is turning and it's turning swiftly. We spoke earlier about just how strong those camels are in this matchup. And now we've got a big convert coming in. GUA looking to turn the tides of battle, managing to only not even get a single knight, but losing the cooldown on that monk. GUA trying his best forcing his knights of the knights of his enemy away even though it's just for a few seconds going to be coming in and surrounding the remaining longbows gu in a bit of a difficult spot right now as those camels as well as those knights look to come in on top of that we see more knights now coming out for GUA still no plus one armor upgrade for him no melee armor no ranged armor at all and gu in a difficult spot right here his economy is in absolute shambles he's on 77 villages right now but he just doesn't have the resources to make units Village is now entering the town center, but it's going to be absolutely doing no damage to these units just primarily because of how high their armor is already. You see he's got double range upgrade as well now. Marine Lord looking absolutely impressive now. Pulling ahead 1,200, 1,100 score. GUA in a difficult spot. We'll tune back in with Marine Lord, see how he's doing at this point. Farming is looking very safe at the moment. He is, he's managed to get into farms very effectively. It can often be difficult to get that transition going. A couple of villager kills up towards the north. It looks like plus one attack has been researched for GUA. More farms everywhere, actually. Marine Lord doing a great job of staying on top of his food income. At this point, it only really looks like he's having difficulty with his gold. We'll take a look at the gold, and there's a reason why he's having difficulty with it. It's because GUA is right on top of him. Now, one of the next phases of this game, of this map, of this matchup, is the move to the middle, the double M that I like to call it. GUA now looking towards the top, going to be going for double stable one, or triple stable. But once again, we, you know, I spoke about this earlier. Why go stable? It, you, you, you can't go stable against Abbasid just because they've got camels. You just mix a couple camels in and now you've got camel fear on your enemy knights. 20% less damage. GUA going to be completely overrun here. He's got longbows, but the longbows aren't even going to matter because Marine Lord's going to be able to pick this up. It's going to be barely scratching him. Eight damage coming through from those longbows. Six melee armor on those lances. Absolute destruction right now. Marine Lord looking to come in. Really go for a killing blow here. Plenty of villages down here to the south. Marine Lord sitting on 82 villages at the moment. GUA on 88, but Marine Lord looking to tie these villages up. Doing his best. A couple crossbows now coming out. Getting taken down before Marine Lord can... Or before GUA can even really get out there. He's all inside his base at this point. More attacks up towards the north, or at least that's what was indicated on my minimap doing the classic little lie to me 
A lot of idle villagers now for GUA. He's down to below 80 villagers at this point. And it looks like Marine Lord, the StarCraft 2 Pro, is probably going to be able to come out with this game successfully. And that is good game, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely insane game. Very well played to Marine Lord. If you've enjoyed this game, make sure you check out GUA's YouTube and his Twitch. I'll leave a link in the description to his Twitch. He's got a YouTube as well, but I'll leave a link to the Twitch. Go say good day. Absolute impressive play from him and Marine Lord a played out of his mind. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.